Now we are going to talk about the topics related to object oriented programming or in short OOP. The very first concept that we want to talk about is class. Till now, when I want to explain something, I normally start small and then explain the harder topics. Now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to show you a complete class and then we will talk about each part. Here is my class. Let's first learn about the definition. When we want to define a class, all we have to do is to write class, the name of the class, for example, in this case, human name of the class and then brackets. That's it. Here we can add the contents of our new class. Now, what are properties? Properties are variables inside the class. For example, here we have a variable called name inside the class human. So this is the property of human. Age is a property of human. Year born is a property of human. Each property has two parts. The first part is the access modifier, like private, and the second part is the name. Name of the property has the structure and the limitation of a normal variable. It's the same thing. So the first letter cannot be a number. We can use alphabets and numbers and underscore in the name and so on. But what about access modifiers? There are three access modifiers. First is private. Second is protected. And the third is public. Private means only the class itself can access it. Otherwise, if you try to access it from another class, from another function, it's going to throw an error. Protected means the class itself and its inherited classes can access it. We will talk about it inheritance in details a bit later. And public means anyone can access this property. As I said, we will talk about these access modifiers in details in the inheritance section. The next thing is a constructor. Like here, as you can see, the name is special, two underscores and construct. Every class has this function by default. When we create an object of that class, construct is the very first function that this class will run. So this function will be run before anything else. We do not need to define the construct, but you can. In this case, for example, if I wanted to create an object for this human, I would write, I don't know, human equals to new human. Here, when I call new human, it will run this construct function. And here I need to pass a name and a year born. So for example, I can say uh, name is Amir and year born is 1994. Okay. It will create an object and with the name Amir and the year born of 1994, it will run this construct function before anything else. Now let's talk about methods. Functions like calculate age, get name and get age are all methods. Functions inside the class are like normal functions. The only difference is that the functions inside the class have access modifiers like the properties that we have talked about, private, protected and public. Next talk about this keyword, which is with dollar sign like this, this keyword. What is this keyword? Here, as you can see it here, as you can see it here, as you can see it here, and here, and here. What does it mean? Well, this is a very important keyword and refers to the current instance, current object that has been made from this class. For example, here, when I said new human, Amir and 1994, it will create an object for me with the name Amir and the year born 1994. So if I create another human like Jack 1998 and let's call it Jack, 
Now inside this object, this age and this name refers to Jack and 1998, but for human with Amir, when we say this name, it will return Amir because this refers to this, but in this object, this refers to this. Now let's talk about this. As you have probably seen here, we have it here, we have it here. And when even we want to run a function, we can say human and we use this and access those functions. What, what is this? Why do we use this? It means to get this method of this object. And if we had some public properties, public like test, and if we had something like that, we could also use this to get that public property or inside the class after this, we could use this, for example, here, this calculate age, this name. If we had an array, we would call it like, I don't know, my array and key, yeah? But with objects, instead of doing that, it would be object and key or function or name or property or anything else. This is one of the difference between objects and arrays. So we can access the properties and methods like this, but inside an array, we should call it like this to get a value. And the last thing we are going to talk about in this section is object versus class. Object versus class. What, what's their difference? I kept saying class and object. So what's the difference? The class is a class itself, human. Human is the class. When we use the new keyword and instantiate this class, we are creating a new instance of this class. This new instance is called an object. This is an object of this class. This is an object of this class. So for example, Jack is an object of human. This is the end of this section. Let's go to the next section and talk about other topics in object-oriented programming.